Welcome back Design Squad and in this sketch Noob to Master series video I'm gonna to talk to you about pixel perfect design. Now pixel perfect is you know it's it's hard to describe but it's usually meant to be something which sticks to the grid which is aligned well which is crafted in a really sharp manner so that you know it doesn't look too deep fried uh, so to speak and and so that whenever say a developer implements you always expect them to implement it pixel perfect now i can't teach you how to be a ui designer in a pe pixel perfect sense because that requires time and a lot of practice so you just need to do it and do it a lot until your designs are so neatly tied in together the layouts make sense for both end user and developers to implement so you're you know mindful of both things but also you know how to do it and I'm gonna give you some examples of how to do it in Sketch and the tools you can use to actually do it well and do it immediately. Uh, because Sketch, just like let's say Photoshop have rulers, uh, it has a lot of different guidelines, grid systems, a lot of different suggestive type of options which are really neat. So I'm gonna just dive into exactly that and show you on this specific case. And this is just a mock-up, you know, which I'm using throughout the videos so it's already done but in retrospect i actually can show you some examples of how you could do it as well going forward and i think it's you can skip it because if you skip it well in the future it might bite you back right and so uh, sketch by default as you can see uh it should have this option where let's say if mouse over different objects it's gonna tell you exactly what you're gonna click on so let's say this text object or that text object if i click in and now if we drag it as you can see, Sketch gives me guidelines. So I, I'm not even pressing any keyboard options. It just automatically aligns it to the closest object and which makes most sense like so. And it tells you that this is pixel perfect if you align 30 miles with two hours ago like so. And then it's meaningful. Of course, the best idea would be to probably do it here maybe even if visually perhaps that looks better so it's up to you to make that decision but sketch gives you the guidelines and the possibility to actually play with it right and so it's pretty good but depending on how you align it everything else should be consistent and that's really important and now i already see because this was designed by i this didn't use any pixel perfect grids or guidelines or any suggestions which sketch has can have and let me deconstruct it as you can see the arrow let's see here if i'm able to click in let me just realign the text the arrow here as you can see doesn't really well align with this thing and so the speech bubble maybe should have been placed to align well like so and maybe even more like this and now as you can see the grid is there with a margin which is consistent across again if you don't feel like it you don't have to do it it could be creative freedom to actually you know break the bits and use different margins because that what makes most sense in that case so please do so but in this case i can already see let's say that it doesn't align and it doesn't look too good so maybe i just need to sh either shift the arrow a bit forward or that a bit to the right and so this is how you could do it in sketch now if you let's say make copies or well, let's say i'm going to just delete those options and make a copy of this bubble and I'm gonna drag it immediately as you can see sketch the text different margins around like this and it gives you suggestions exactly so 16 by 16 is something of the space I have from the first item and now in a second item as you can see it automatically suggests different margins and then also suggest to do that for the other item so it's consistent so you always have that suggestion that almost like a virtual clippy thing which tells you that hey this is what you could match and if you match it you know you're in a good place because that's mu much more likely that the design is actually pixel perfect in the end so that's one thing which sketch is really amazing is those smart suggestions now other tools have that too so that's you know nothing new but this is how you do it basically now, if you go to view uh, tab, which you probably can't see in the video because it's probably going to be cut out because of recording preferences. But if you click on view tab, you're going to see that there's a lot of different options which are toggleable. Like, for example, high interface, show slices, show prototyping. You know, if you don't want it, you can just disable it. But the most important bit what we're looking for here is canvas. 
Now if you go to canvas, here you're gonna see that there are multiple different options and all the en enabled ones like show pixel grid on zoom, let me demonstrate that. But let's say if I zoom in, as you can see the grid appears. If, if you go into the specific detail, let's say crafting icons, the grid is gonna appear for you to make it much more pixel perfect. And as you can see, the borderline is adjusted pretty well, so it's one pixel and it's pixel perfect. However, now I would go and make block rectangle, um, let's say 0.5, which is in between pixels like so. As you can see now it's in between pixels and chances are if I would export this asset, it would blow out or deep fry itself and it wouldn't look too good because it would be a bit blurry compared to other assets. And so it's good to keep the things to that grid and it's good to sometimes to zoom in and check exactly if the grid corresponds to your designs and your preferences, right? So that's one thing. Now really quickly to go through all of them, uh, all guides, layer selection, layer highlight, artboard, it's all the things I already showed you. All those different bits, all the pixel guides which appear if you drag things, if you copy things, if you adjust things, that's exactly that. And they should be enabled if they are not, do that right now. Enable these things right now because it's gonna save you so much time. And it's also, you know, keep, gonna keep your mind sane in the end if you're thinking, oh, if, if I'm doing the, you know, the right thing. Now, what I want to focus on is several things right now. So there are three different bits which you definitely need to explore if you're new to sketch, let's say, or you're still developing or you want to develop in pixel perfect design. And so it's the rulers, it's always good to have it because sometimes when you're designing, let's say in this artboard, it's good to know exactly how many pixels you're spending without having to look into properties tab, like here, for example. As you can see, I can see that it's around 60 pixels roughly, but not so maybe I would need to adjust it to make it 50 pixels. But as you can see, the ruler gives you that option to add splices as well and to add guidelines like so. And so if I want to, let's say, move it just slightly, I can do as well and create my own personal custom grid if I want to, like so. Let's say it adds, let's add one in the very middle, so sort of, let's say this is what I'm after. As you can see, immediately a lot of different bits stand out like the message bit here which is out of a thing and if i want to align let's say that with an arrow now it's much much better and so you can explore a fat that's really quickly what the ruler is about next is show grid and show layout now there is going to be also settings of how you can do it but if you click show grid at the default it's going to automatically generate you a grid for this bit and it's gonna work exactly like the ruler did before this is a fake almost like a ghost layer of a grid it's not gonna show if you export your thing so you can toggle it in and out but it's gonna give you some guidance of how to design things around just to show you the options you have again going to grid settings now and let's say I'm gonna do 40 and as you can see it automatically previews you and maybe 9 or something like that it automatically shows and dedicates. So you even can change the color. But my point is that you need to align your grid to be well well adjusted. As you can see right now, this it does it's not really well adjusted because half of the thing is cut off. And so I can't really use the grid from the right hand side. However, if for responsive design, if you adjust it well from all sides and it's all fitting nicely, then you can, you know, you can easily design into iPad, into desktop from a mobile first approach. It's quite much more easier that way. Next, let me just disable that grid and I'm gonna go ahead into layout. So if I click show layout, it's exactly the similar option, which is basically for layouting, you know, back in the day, let's say, I don't know how many years ago, and like almost like a decade ago, layouts and grids and those bands were such a big thing. So you could download like a Photoshop template with only layout bars or make your own and then design on top of it like a guideline. So you knew exactly which bits would, you know, impact how they would stretch if let's say your object would take three lanes instead of two lanes or four lanes. And so there was a lot of responsiveness in, in place and a lot of thought behind it. And so Sketch has that capability too. And if I go to, let's say, the options of the layout setting, you're gonna see that I have a lot of different bits which I can actually play with. For example, the offset, how many cones. So let's say if I'm saying this is gonna be just six or something like that. 
and let's say I'm gonna also increase the gutter width is massive here so let's decrease that uh, the column width is pretty good I guess but now as you can see I made a layout which much better aligns with what I want to achieve in the end and if that's okay with me if I maybe want to add rows, I could do that too, but that's okay with me. I would click OK and then design alongside. So let's see, this one maybe is in, in the middle of the lane. These two objects maybe are gonna take uh, four of the lanes. And let's say the bigger the screen, the, more, the bigger the lanes would become. And so the objects would decrease and so increase. And so it adds a lot of flexibility for you to design it in a pixel perfect way across the different channels and across the different devices. And so explore these options really quickly. I just wanted to show you how you can actually enhance your capability of design because these options are sometimes lifesaver, but usually if you just have them enabled, they're just gonna be there and you can just use them whenever you want. And so check it out. I hope this video was useful. If you're still learning Sketch and you have specific question, leave a comment down below. If it's something like, oh, I'm not sure how to design a menu icon, or I'm not sure how to design a pop-up on a mobile or something like something specific, graphical, let me know, I can cover that too, because then it's gonna be easier for you to learn per use case, use case basis rather than feature basis which is right now and so i'm gonna always try to you know make it much more useful for you guys as per usual subscribe share with your friends and yeah i'll see you next time